In the course of the next few years, major developments can be expected from any or all of three distinct quarters. The most obvious of these, needless to say, is the Qumran material itself now that the entire corpus of this material is readily accessible, independent scholars without preconceptions, without access to grind and vested interests to protect, can get to work. The international team's orthodoxy of interpretation has already begun to come under attack, and as this book has demonstrated the support, supposed archaeological and paleographical evidence with which they support their position, with will position will not withstand close scrutiny. In, con in consequence, we can expect a radical revision of the process whereby dates have been assigned to a number or of particularly important texts. As a result, new contexts and interpretations will emerge for already familiar material, and new material will emerge in perspectives that would have been cursorily and high-handedly dismissed a few years ago. At the same time, there is also the possibility enhanced by each new archaeological expedition Eisenman and his colleagues undertake to Qumran and the shores of the Dead Sea that wally new material may come to light. This possibility will be further enhanced not now that the Israeli government has granted permission for its use by the de deployment of the subsurface interface radar system. Finally, there is the clandestine scroll market, which may at any moment cough up something of unprecedented consequence, something his third kept secret. At last released into public domain, as we have such said such material exists, the question is simply if and when those who hold it decide it can be divulged, whether the quarter or quarters from which new material might issue fresh and in some cases very major revelations are bound to be forthcoming. As this occurs, we can expect even more light to be shed on biblical history, on the on the character of ancient Judaism, on the origins of both Christianity and Islam. One should not, of course, expect a disclosure of such magnitude as to topple the church or anything as a upper as that. The church today, after all, is less a religious than a social, cultural, political and economic institution. Its stability and security rest on factors quite remote from the creed, the doctrine and the dogma it promulgates. But some people, at any rate, may be prompted to wonder whether the church, an institution so demonstrably, de demonst demonstrably lacks biased and unreliable in its own scholarship, its own version of its history and origins should necessarily be deemed reliable and authority or authoritative in its approach to such urgent contemporary matters as overpopulation, birth control, the status of woman, and the celibacy of the clergy.